Hello, everyone, and a warm welcome to today's webinar, wherever you are joining us from in the world. In fact, why don't you put in the chat box now on your right just where you are, uh, what time it is where you are. It's currently 3 p.m. where I am. I'm in Madrid. And, and I, I'm over Sarah. in Italy. I'm hello. Good afternoon to everyone. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. We're, we're delighted you could make time to be with us. And I'm in Sesto Fiorentino, which is near Florence in Italy. And I'm based in Madrid. Um, so I work with all of the official preparation materials, the books, the courses for Cambridge Assessment English and Cambridge University Press. And Sarah And is... I, I work for Cambridge Assessment English based in the office in Bologna. And I work with a lot with the teacher support and, uh, and, and working with teachers in general. So yes. It's great. great. You can't keep up, can't keep up with the chat box today. Yes, it's lots of people. A million Spain. miles an hour. And Thailand, so even flying up. Ecuador, Brazil, Brilliant. I can see flying Russia. So it's really great. I, I think we just we should just sit here and watch the chat box in the <laughs> afternoon and, and maybe not say anything. It's really, really interesting. Saudi Arabia, Arabia Poland. Brilliant. And we've got Moscow, Greece too. Iran. Fantastic. Argentina. Okay. I saw India there, Romania, Brazil. Yeah. Brilliant. So for some people it's morning, so good morning. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. That's great. Great, right. So um, Sarah and I are going to introduce our guest speaker in a moment. Before we do that, we just want to run through a couple of, of, of things with you all. Um, let's just start off by, of course, again, welcoming you if you just joined us to the first in our series of five webinars. Um, each of these home fun webinars will be running over the next couple of weeks. You can see the timetable in front of you now, and we will share links with you where you can find this later. Um, the, the webinars are aimed at teachers teaching younger learners, primary age students, um, and especially tailored to the current climate that we're all, we're all finding ourselves in. In other words, teaching remotely or teaching from home, whatever your personal context is at the moment. Um, I hope you find, and I'm sure you will find all of these webinars very useful, very creative. Um, we're going to um, just share a couple of uh, bits of housekeeping yes Sarah. exactly um, and just for those of you who just joined us um if you want to join the other webinars you can either go to the cambridge university press website or also cambridge assessment english website and you'll find links in different places uh so absolutely do join us for the rest of the series for this actual webinar just a couple of things just to invite you to use the chat box many of you are already using it so that you obviously can interact uh, with anne and uh, uh, if you do have any problems with connectivity, there is a, a refresh button that you can see at the top of your screen. And if you press that, it will um, bring you back into the uh, webinar again and refresh the settings. So do if you need to use that, don't be afraid to. It will bring you back into the webinar. Um, and of course, uh, just very briefly while we're getting ready um, to say that you will be able to find resources. Um, and as Stuart said at the end, we'll be giving you links. But there are a couple of websites we want to point out to you. So the Cambridge Assessment English website with the supporting every teacher section will take you to lots of resources about the, the young learner tests, but also resources for teachers. But we'll talk about that in a bit more detail later. Great. And as Sarah said, likewise, the Cambridge University Press um, website, if you go there, um, also has a, a number of materials and blog articles supporting every teacher in this time. And we will, as Sarah says, we'll come back to these at the end of the session as well, just to have a look at them. I'll also just quickly mention while, we, while we've got your attention, while everyone's joining, um, that we will have handouts available for today's session and the songs and the chants referred to in today's session. And we'll be sharing those handouts with you at the end of the session or towards the end of the session. Okay, everyone. So hope you have a fantastic webinar. Um, I'm about to hand over to Anne and Sarah and I are going to turn off our cameras, but you will see us again at the end of the webinar. So sit back and enjoy. And Anne, it's over to you. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? I hope. Can everybody just chat, uh, type That's in fine. to the chat yes. box? Yes. Seems Sarah can certainly hear me. Yes. Excellent. Okay, so let's let's get going. So 
So to start off with a little rap that I wrote. Songs, chants, raps and rhymes can get us through the good and bad times. So welcome to this webinar to explore how they can take you and your students far. Right, so as, it's, as this session is about songs and rhymes, I thought I would start off with a song or a rhyme or a rap. Um, and I was using some instruments there, which I'll be talking about later as well. So, the activities that I'm going to show you today and share with you uh, are, are all taken from a series of books called Fun Skills. So I've taken uh, activities from different uh, books, different levels, but I hope that I'll be um, showing you and you'll be inspired to use them with different age groups and different levels in your classroom or your online classroom. So the first one we're going to look at, I've called Say Them. Okay, so I'm going to show you a slide. And I want you to think about those pictures that you can see on the slide and think about what connections, what connects those th uh, three sets of pictures. What's the connection between the pictures? Yes, so Maribel says clothed, yes. Things you put on, the color, okay. And there's a second connection, which I think I just spotted going down the chat box there. What's the, what is the start of these three words? What sound do they sh share? Okay, this is moving very quickly here, yeah, the, the chat box. Yes, the sh, sh sound, okay? So the spelling is S-H and the pronunciation is sh, like the sound we make when we're saying be quiet, sh. So I wanted to share this little chant with you, okay? And I wanted also at this point to mention there is a recording, there is an audio file available for this chant. I'm not sharing it here because or using it here because there are so many of you and we didn't want to slow down the connection. But uh, you can see, I hope that little blue symbol in front of listen and chant, that will tell you the track number for this audio. I'm going to do it uh, for you without uh, playing the audio. Uh, because it's something that you can do in class as well okay you don't need to have the audio file but you can use it uh, if you like okay so let's listen you're going to listen and i'm going to chant so sh, sh, sh. say with me sh, sh, sh. one two three shirt shoes t-shirt shirt shoes T-shirt. Okay, so we've got this connect these three connected clothing words, but we can take this further. We can use it more. So look at the next slide. What have I added to this slide? What's in this latest picture? So what can you see in the picture? next to the t-shirt shorts and do shorts start with the same spelling and the same sound as shoes and shirt and the shirt in t-shirt yes okay so we can add that so Stay with me. Shh, 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 shh. One, two, three. 
shirt, shoes, t-shirt, shorts. Okay, so we've added another word. So we could uh, challenge students to add more words uh, starting with the same sound. Okay, all of these words are from the pre-A1 starters word list. If you work with the A1 starters tests, they're all from that word list. Now, what about the pictures on this slide? Are they clothes? So they're not clothes. They're not, in fact, from any one vocabulary set here. But again, they all start with the sound shh. OK, I'm going to ask Sarah and Stuart to turn back on their microphones and if they want as well, video. And Stuart and Sarah, can you? Okay, me? yes. Are you there? Yep, we're here. Okay. Hello. We're going to say those three words, but you can choose the order. Okay. So you can say sheep, shell, shop, which is the order of the, of the pictures, or you could say shell, shop, sheep or shop, sheep, shell, whatever, okay? Okay. So or uh, I'll, we'll do the shh, 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 and then you choose how to say the words or which words to say, and hopefully we can hear all three of us, I hope. Okay. <laughs> okay so you ready? Shh, 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 shh. Stay with me. Shh, shh, shh. One, One, two, two three. three. Sheep. Shell. 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 Shop. Sheep. Sheep. Shop. Shop. So Sarah and I chose the same order. Okay, Stuart, I think I, uh, you, you chose a different order. I went for sheep, shell, shop. Right. And I like shell, shop, sheep. Okay. Or another var variation. You could ask your students just to say, their favorite picture on the slide okay so if your students like sheep then they will just say sheep or if they like shells they'll say shell or if they like shopping they can they can say shop okay so give them a choice as to what to say or the order that they say them in um, and yes you could use this with uh, sentences with tongue twisters Okay, so it could be shh, 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 say with me, shh, 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 one, two, three, she sells seashells on the seashore. Okay, but we could start off with this. Okay, and I wanted to, um, I reuse activities a lot because, especially activities that my students like, so you can change the sound or change the spelling. Okay, so this time I've changed it to ch ch ch. Say with me. Ch ch ch. One, two, three. Chips, chicken, chocolate. Okay, so can you think of any spelling or sound combinations that it would be useful for you to practice with your students? Any sounds that your students have particular problems with? So we've had sh and ch. Any others? Yeah, so we've got p, f, yeah. TH came up a lot this morning, the f, f, f. So we could have theater okay we, you can use your your word lists okay I've, I've still got this version okay so we could do thin think thirsty or thursday yeah so any of those sounds that your students perhaps find difficult you could use this chant to practice it with the sounds can be at the front of the start of the words like we've seen me here or they could be the end of words. For example, if you want to do playing, singing, okay? It doesn't have to be at the start of the word. 
Okay, so I hope you can see that you could reuse this chant to work on different uh, pronunciation areas. Okay, so let's look at another activity that again, I hope you'll be able to reuse with your students several times. So this one I've called spell them. Okay. So now I'm going to say some letters. I'm going to say a chant. And let's imagine you're my students. Listen to the chant and write the word. Okay, so you have to wait until I've said all the letters and then you write the word in the chat box. So you ready? Okay. Come on, come on. Repeat with me. One, two, three. Give me an L. L. Give me an E. E. Give me an M. M. Give me an O. O. Give me an N. N. Give me an S. S. What's the word? Okay, yes, it was lemons. It was give me an L, give me an E, give me an N, give me an O, give me an N, give me an S. Lemons. Okay, so this activity in fun skills, it comes from level two, and uh, students can have the pictures and the first letter to help them. And then they listen to the chant and they write the missing letters on the lines. Okay, but you could uh, get them to listen to the chant first. Don't show them the pictures, then give them the pictures and they write the letters on the lines. And then your students can write their own chants. Okay, so here is the text. And there is lemons, okay? Again, uh, you can see, I hope that after the number four, this is track 22, okay? We'll be making these audios available for you or to you. But again, you can do it. You don't need the audio if you don't have it or you can't play it when you're teaching your students. And then in your handouts, which we'll be sharing with you later, You've got the frame for them to write their own chants. Okay. And what I would suggest is use this as this as, as it is, as this activity, but then also use it when you're checking answers with students. So maybe they've been doing a reading or a gap fill and you're checking answers. So instead of saying the word or spelling the word, they could spell the word using this chant. Okay. And give me some paper. Give me some scissors. Give me some tape. What can I make? P O M P O M S. Pom pom. So, uh, on my web page, which you'll be getting the link to later, um, I, I, I should have just gone live, a post explaining how to make these pom-poms. It's very easy. Okay, so these, these are pieces of, pieces of paper that I've put on top of each other, cut them into strips, made a handle, and then I've got my pom-pom. But... Uh, some of the teachers this morning were saying quite correctly that um, you could use anything to make these pom-poms. You can use plastic bags uh, even, and they make very rustly pom-poms, okay? But this could be something that you could reuse uh, in your classes, both in the classroom and online, okay? Um, and get a bit of um, excitement going there in your classes. 
So we've looked at spell them, say them, and now we're going to do another activity with say your favourites. Okay, so this is um, from Fun Skills 2, Level 2 again. Um, right at the end, actually, of the book, and you've got the chant. Again, there is an audio for this, but you don't need it. You can do it yourself. So we've got websites are fun, tablets are cool, computers are fantastic, but playing tennis rules. Okay, so all of these sentences are uh, about hobbies. Okay, well, the first three are really about technology. Um, but they're about what they like to do in their free time, okay? So, students can write their own chant, okay? It could be on one topic, so you could talk, uh, get them to complete it about their hobbies. Uh, or it could be other things. What other things could they write on the lines in their own chant? So we could do hobbies. What other things could we do? Weather. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, we could do different types of weather. People. Food. Yes, food was the one I thought of as well. Yeah, so it could be famous people even. Songs, music, but you like animals, pets, yeah. Okay, so we don't just have to use it um, once, we can use it and reuse it. You could change uh, the adjectives, okay? So we could have websites are awesome, tablets are uh, wonderful. Okay, you, you can get them to choose that as well, uh, to, sorry, to change that as well. Emotions, okay. And I wanted to share, um, and again, I think this, this link is going in your handouts. Um, I don't know whether any of you saw this performance of Sting's song. So Sting is there in the middle on the right, and the man next to him on the left in the middle is Jimmy Fallon, who has a TV show show in the USA. So they performed Don't Stand So Close To Me from home, as a lot of us are now. Um, and they did this online live performance. But what I thought was very amusing and interesting, actually, very interesting, were the instruments. So the man uh, at the bottom right, in the bottom right corner, if you can see, he's holding some Converse trainers. So he's clapping those uh, trainers together. The man next to him has a pan lid and some wooden sticks. Uh, the man at the, on the bottom line at the left, in the left corner there, he's got a cushion. Can you imagine what sound a cushion would make? Very soft sound, wouldn't it? And the man at the top, where I've got forks, he changes to, um, in the uh, song performance. At one point, he's using songs, but at another point, I don't know whether you can see me here, he's using scissors. And then the one that I thought was hilarious is the one that I've put a little white circle there. Uh, the top right-hand corner, can you see what that man's making music with? Yeah, so some of you have seen this video. So what is the man? Yeah, Loretta. He's using one of he's using that game, the Connect game, where you have uh, circular um, counters and you drop them in 
to try and make uh, three in a row or a row. Um, and obviously that will make a click sound as the counters drop into the connect game. It's called connect four. Okay. Mastermind might be another good one. Okay. It's not mastermind, but, um, or an abacus again. Yeah, that would be a, a great idea. So this gave me an idea for this webinar, but also for classes um, to suggest to you to try out with your students for them to bring along some instruments. So the ones here, and I seem to have, oh, I find my fork. The ones here are ready made, okay? So these are my plastic forks. And they make a sound. These are lollipop sticks, and they make a sound. And at the start of the webinar, I used these, which are meat kebab skewers, and they all make sounds. But your students can also make air uh, sounds and make instruments. So I, I put buttons in this little jar here. Oops, sorry. I've got some chickpeas in this bottle and I've got some paper clips and a little box. Okay, so you could get your students, especially if you're going to do a song, to, um, to make their instruments. Okay, and um, one word of warning, check with your students that your their parents aren't um, working from home and perhaps on an important telephone call or a Skype call or or a webinar like we are um, and they need silence so I would actually encourage students to make quite quiet instruments so the chickpeas here are quite noisy even though I've just got a few there okay but the buttons are much softer sound okay so challenge your students to recycle to think to invent to create their own instruments and use them in your online classes okay so uh, again i'll be uh, posting some suggestions on my web page but please uh, contact me with other ideas um, because I'd be very interested to hear them, okay? And let me know how your students get on and what they make. That would be fascinating to know. Okay, and then they could use their instruments when they uh, share their chant with the rest of the group. Okay, so now I'm going to share with you a poem. So I'm going to show you a slide and on the slide again there are some pictures and can you tell me what's the connection between these pictures so can you type into the chat chat box um, what's the connection between these pictures okay yes the connection of pirates okay these are all words that are connected to pirates so this is from fun skills level three um, first of all Students complete the crossword by filling in the missing letters for the words for the pictures. Okay, so for one, we've got a pirate's hat, so the letters A, T are missing to make hat. So students do the crossword, and then next, we get them to complete the pirate poem with those words. Okay, and there isn't a recording for this at the moment. Um, so I'm going to read it, okay, and I'm going to put my pirate mask here. 
Pirates, pirates, where do they live? On a ship, of course. Pirates, pirates, where do they go? To an island, of course. Pirates, pirates, what do they like? Finding treasure, of course. Pirates, pirates, who do they talk to? To the, who do pirates talk to? Can anybody help me? I can't remember the name of that bird. I thank you. Parrots, they talk to their parrot, of course. Their parrots are their best friends. Pirates, pirates, what do they wear? A hat and boots, of course. So they do that activity and then they write their own poem. So they write a poem about cl clowns. So clowns, where do they live? What do they like? Who do they talk to? What do they wear? Yes, so they live uh, in a circus, or perhaps they live in a caravan in a circus. They like jokes, yes, and they like juggling. They like juggling balls, don't they? And who do they talk to? Oh, they like red noses too. Mm. They talk to the animals in the circus. Yes, they probably do. They talk to children. They talk to grown-ups. They like parties. Yes, they like fun. And what do clowns wear? What's this clown wearing here? Do they wear a hat like pirates do? They do, don't they? And very often in their hat, they have a flower. And they wear big shoes, very big shoes. I don't know how they don't fall over. Okay. So your students write the answers to these questions and then they can write their own poem like I've done here. And we'll share this outline of the clown so your students could write their poem and add it to this clown. But also they might decide, no, I'd like to do a design like the pirate, pirate poem. Um, and instead of the islands, maybe they'll have circus tents. Okay, so they can illustrate their poems and design the layout as they like. I'm going to share an example like this with you, but why not ask your students, and especially your very artistic students, to think of how to organize their poem and write their poem. Okay, so I think if we give, if we give the students help and scaffolding, they can write very nice poems. And they could write, obviously, about other um, characters, other animals, for example. We could use this with Okay, so let's get moving. So this next activity comes from level five of fun skills. So level five would be starting to prepare for A2 movers to give you an idea of the level. And uh, again, we have the audio for this. 
so that they listen to the to the audio and they write the words to complete the questions so what they will hear and i'm going to say it to you is left hand right hand or both which hand do you choose sorry do you use left hand right hand or both which one will you choose and the, for the last sentence i'll show the next slide where we have the complete sentences so it's left hand right hand or both which hand do you use left hand right hand or both and then you put your hands behind your back which one will you choose so you i'm going to ask say an activity and you show the hand that you use for the activity so it could be your right hand your left hand or it could be both hands okay so i'm going to show you the teacher book instructions here okay so for example if we say play tennis so it'd be left hand right hand which hand do you use left hand right hand or both which one will you choose and i would show my right hand because i play tennis with my right hand but i also actually throw the ball when i serve with my left hand so maybe both for playing tennis okay so i'm going to give you a sequence now of things that you probably do i imagine every day and I'm going to say the, the chant, and I can't see you, okay? But if you want to do the action, great. Okay, so we're going to do left hand, right hand, or both. I'm going to, um, to say an action, and I want you to show me which hands you would use. Okay, so you ready? Left hand, right hand or both which hand do you use left hand right hand or both which one will you choose put my hands behind my back okay hold your toothbrush put your toothpaste on your toothbrush Hold your toothbrush, clean your teeth. Okay, so left hand, right hand or both. Toothbrush, toothpaste, take my toothbrush with my right hand and then I clean my teeth using my right hand. Okay. And again, get your students to think of actions to challenge their classmates as to which hands they would use. And to try maybe to think of an action that everybody will show the same hand. Okay. So use it with actions, activities, and getting students to think about things that they do every day, maybe automatically. They don't think about how they do them, but this makes them think about the process and how they do it. Okay, so let's keep moving. Okay, so I'm going to go out of the slides now and we're going to watch a video, okay, which I'll, I'll show you the link to later. So I'm going to close the slides, go out of the slides, go into a video which is on YouTube and we'll be sharing the link to the video. And I hope your connection will let you watch and listen to the song and the video. Track four, unit two. 
Page 10. 2 and 3. Listen and sing. Do the actions. Say My uncle's wearing shoes. How about you? How about you? People wearing shoes. Stand up and say woohoo. Say My cousin likes football. How about you? How about you? People who like football stand up and say woohoo. Say woohoo! And yes, <laughs> I need my mic back on. <laughs> I hope everybody was exactly. able to hear that. Yes, you want to stand up and say woohoo, Simona? You stand up. You feel free to stand up. <laughs> okay, so um, I think you saw I made myself a woohoo sound. Okay, so again, sign. Sorry, so you could do that with your students. Okay. Um, but the idea here is a bit like Simon says, okay, so maybe students uh, you're, don't have uh, long hair, so those students wouldn't stand up, uh, they could say woohoo, but they wouldn't stand up, but students with long hair would stand up um, and sing and say woohoo, okay. So uh, we'll be sharing the link on the handout to where that video uh, is with the song. Um, and there's also a second version which uh, doesn't have the task inserted. So th there's a one video which has the sentences that they have to match. And there's a second video which is the song um, and you know says woohoo at the time when they have to stand up and say woohoo. It's on YouTube, but we're sharing you the, the link, okay? So you can see this, the task here was to match the people to what they are, what they are doing, what they are wearing, what they've got. Uh, and at this point, I, what I like to do when I have a, a course book and I have pictures, is I like students to ask students to think, is this picture complete? So, do we have all those people in the sentences in this picture? Is there anybody missing? So we can see the grandparents. The grandparents are dancing. 
we can see the uncle. He's the man with a green T-shirt. Um, we can see the aunt. She's the one with the long hair. We can see the cousin kicking the football at the back. But are the parents in this picture? Yeah, I think the parents are missing, okay? So you could ask students, what do you think the parents look like? If they were in this picture, what would they be doing? Would they be dancing too? And my other question is, who's singing this song? Do you think the person who's singing the song is in this picture? What do you think? Do you think the person who's singing is the boy between the aunt and the uncle? Or do you think he might be the boy at the front with the green trousers and glasses? Or do you think it's another person? So there's no right answer here. It's what you think. We don't know. Okay. So whatever the students say is fine but get them to say why they think that uh, it's that boy with the glasses or it's the boy who's dancing or it's another person who isn't the picture or it's the, the character from the fun skills there who's taking the picture at the front, perhaps. Okay, so get them to think about pictures and are they complete? Is there anything missing? Okay. So at the back of uh, the fun skills books, we have checklists and I've just taken uh, just the checklist um, item for this song. Okay, so this is on the listening checklist and they circle the squirrel if they think yes, if their answer is yes. So it's I listened to the song, read the words and matched the people to what they were doing in task two, which is the song on page 10 and they can circle the squirrel and they have checklists for all the skills and for lots of different activities in the fun skills books. I think it's a lovely way of checking that they feel, feel confident that they are happy with what they've done. Okay, And I think on our online quest, uh, classes, it's a very useful thing to check uh, that students feel happy that uh, what you've done in the class today, they've understood um, and they don't, uh, or they feel as that they've practiced enough um, and they've understood what, what you've been doing in class. Okay, so the students again, I, I like to use uh, activities and then I like students to create their own versions of the activities. So here, the students can write their own verse. They can write it about somebody in their family, a friend, themselves, um, and complete it. And then the students uh, can share their verses with the other students, and the students uh, can stand up. And I'd add a little challenge for students, write a verse that makes everyone who's in this class today so for me everyone in the webinar say stand up and say woohoo okay so sarah and stuart i'm going to challenge you i've got a verse that i'm going to show you and <laughs> are you ready I am feeling happy. How about you? How about you? Attendees who are happy. Stand up and say Thank you. <laughs> you didn't want to hear me sing, everybody. You didn't want to hear me sing. It's great. Okay, so uh, Stuart, are you going to take over now with the, um, and 
I, I, I've been, I haven't kept my eye enough on the chat box to know, have the handouts been shared yet? Not yet, so I think right. we can do that now. Right. Not yet, yeah, if one of our um, colleagues could um, yes. share the handouts, sure. and those of you in the webinar, you should see something appear in the bottom corner, the bottom right-hand corner of your chat box area when we share the handouts. I think they've been shared now. So you should be able to click on the handouts. There's two handouts, and there are uh, a zip file of audio audios from today's session. So go ahead and download those now. Just to repeat that, your handouts should be shared with you now. You should be able to, they should come up on the bottom right of your screen and you can click on them and download them. We can't actually see them, so we're just- I can um, see, I can see them going, yeah, Fantastic. I can see they're up, that's okay. Great, um, the handouts have all of the links from today that Anne has mentioned. Um, and we've got a couple more things we want to share with you. Um, one of the things is some of you have been asking um, where the material is from today that Anne's been talking about. Anne is one of the authors on our brand new six level course, which prepares primary students or young learners for the Cambridge pre-A1 starters, A1 movers and A2 flyers exams. Full of great activities, full of skills-based fun activities. They also come with a home booklet that connects the students learning to the home. Um, and I'm pleased to say that we're making those home booklets available for free, three levels. Um, and I'll show you in a minute. Uh, actually, on the handouts, you'll find downloads to three levels of the home booklet, which you can use as teachers. It includes stories with videos, and it includes... Uh, I can just see Fabio shared one of the levels there, but they're all on your handouts. So do have a look at those. As I said, Anne, Anne is one of the authors on this new series, so lots of fun stuff in there, as you can tell from the name. Yes, exactly. No, the super stuff. Um, and uh, just to, to remind people, if you didn't see at the beginning, um, on the Cambridge Assessment English website, there's a special section called Supporting Every Teacher, as you can see here. And there's the QR code if you can use it to download. Um, and also, when you go onto that site, you'll find an interactive PDF called Inspire. You can just see that on the left. And once you open it up, you can choose different um, resources and particular particularly for young learners. There is a young learner page where you can download samples of the um, tests. So you can look at the pre-A1 starters, A1 movers and A2 flyers sample tests and resources to go with that. So you've got pictures, you've got flashcards and other activities which will also complement the material that Anne's been talking about. So hopefully you'll be able to find that useful, lots of resources. Great, and as we said at the beginning, also following on from Sarah there, more stuff for you to find here. If you go to the Supporting Every Teacher link on the handout for Cambridge um, University Press, as well as Cambridge Assessment English, <clears throat> you'll find uh, loads of articles, a lot of stuff, of course, focused on teaching online um, for young learners and older students and adults, all kinds of different stuff, so do have a look. And including, you can probably see at the bottom here of the screen, the just advertising what we've already told you about the fun skills home booklets which are short booklets designed um, to be used at home but you can equally use parts of them online and stories in fact i think our webinar on monday will deal with some of the stories from the home booklet yeah. and yeah. how you can bring those alive in an online online situation so you've been shared some of those links have been shared with you but they are on the handouts three levels have been made available for free for you all and some more goodies here. If that's not enough, we also, don't forget, have our teacher resource site, World of Fun, which you can find the link to on the handout as well. This is very focused on young learner exams and the materials you need to bring those classrooms alive, including posters, word cards, booklets, articles, previous webinars, and so on. So explore in there. And I'm sure lots of this stuff can also be used with video platforms, uh, teaching remotely, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm very happy to be giving away free stuff to all of you. I hope you uh, have a good have good fun sort of playing around with it all. And, and I can see my colleagues throwing the links into the window there. But don't forget to pick these handouts up before you leave us. Okay. Yeah. And don't forget to sign up for the next webinars on the Cambridge University Press website or the Cambridge Assessment uh, English Absolutely, website. Absolutely, yeah. You'll Before. find also on the Spanish uh, website um, for Cambridge Assessment English and the Italian one also on the country specific, you may also find links to these webinars. So do sign up for the next ones. 
Likewise, we've, we've put these everywhere, really, haven't we? Everywhere we can. Yeah. So you'll find them on the global sites, the local websites. If you have a Cambridge University uh, press representative or a business um, support manager from Cambridge Assessment English, um, they'll also be able to point you in the right direction to all of these resources and lots, lots more. So um, we have a couple of minutes if you have any questions that you want to um, put in the chat box. And if we can, we'll try and answer them now with Anne's help. Mm -hmm. uh, certificates, some of you are mentioning certificates. Please bear with us. This is our first webinar in our series. So we are busy trying to, um, from our back end, we're trying to sort of um, set these up for you. Um, we are planning on sending certificates to all of the inter attendees today. Um, and I hope that, that they'll be with you in the next few days, I would imagine, Sarah. Yeah? Yes, absolutely. Um, and so, uh, yes. Please, hold on, don't worry, they are coming, okay? And people are asking about whether they would have their name on them. So, yes, these are named, which is why you're not downloading them now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's easier to send them out, out yeah. afterwards. Yeah. Uh, any, any questions, anything particularly you want to ask before we, before we leave you for this afternoon or this morning, wherever you are? Um, we had a question this morning, and I've just noticed a similar one there, Stuart, which was yeah. um, how to get young learners involved on, in online lessons and participating. Watch um, your webinars. Uh, <laughs> no, on, online teaching, okay? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I mean, my, my thing would be, um, just as in the actual physical classroom, I think you have to do the activities. OK, so we can't say to students, stand up, uh, stand up and say woohoo if we're not standing up and saying woohoo. So obviously the teacher, you're, you yourself, OK, do the actions and, and encourage students by your own example. But I also think, you know, by um, getting them to create things like these that we've used, they can have them and bring them to each class. <laughs> bring them to each Hello. class. Yeah, okay, yes, Stuart, you've moved on since this morning, wow. I know, I, I, I made this in 10 minutes while I was watching you, Anne. Yeah, it's very good. It's not very secure, though. It keeps yeah. falling off. Okay, so, um, you know, do it once and then say, right, for the next lesson, surprise me. Bring something else, okay? Uh, or maybe, you know, maybe some of your students may come from a musical family and maybe the family might want to, even to perform for the, for the rest, okay? Or they could... Pre prepare something in a breakout room i don't know you know they but i think the, the key thing is for you to get um involved and you to feel like you want to sing and you want to do the activities great mm -hmm. um lo lots of people also asking about recording this webinar is automatically recorded and uh so you can watch what's called a replay on this platform um, I'll have to check where that is, but we'll make sure that you get links to those. I, I should say here that we're going to be posting a blog from Anne um, following up from this <laughs> webinar and over the next week or so. And on that blog, we'll include a sort of a summary of what, what you've seen today, some of the ideas, all of the handouts, and we will link to the replay of the video within that blog as well. Um, you might also try going back to the link that you used for this webinar today, and that might give you a choice to we play. I, I can't remember off the top of my head. We're using so many different platforms at the moment. So let, 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 let me double check that. But there is a recording and it will be made available at some point. Okay. Yep. Great. Thank you very much for joining us. Yeah. Thank, Thank you very much. much. And I'll see you personally, I hope, next Wednesday. I'll be back. With yeah. The... And don't forget, we got another one on Monday with I'm Jane, with Jane. And Rita, uh, mm -hmm. at the same time, 10 in the morning. Central European time and three three in the afternoon um, Central European time. Sarah and I will also be here with yeah. our uh, supporting cast. That's uh, Fabio, thank you. Paola, thank you. And Jenny, thank you. They've been helping in the chat box today. So see you all next time. Thanks thank you very much, much everybody. Bye. Bye.